Last time on Scratch, we made a spaceship that can shoot bullets and fly around, and everything points in the, in the direction that we intended it to. First order of business, I think I'm going to put some controls on this acceleration, because I can zip around real, real fast, and I don't think that's so good at too high of a speed. So I'm going to accelerate as long as it stays under 10. Let's test it out. And looking at our variable up on the top, we stay at about 10 move speed, which it still gets around and it doesn't uh, go out of control. Now I make a small adjustment to my deceleration because I want the ship to maintain some momentum as it accelerates space. Then I'm going to add extra layers, so I'm going to bring in an if-then-else statement. So if it's more than 1, I'm going to increase this number, I'm going to decrease by 0.5. But if it's less than 3, then it will decelerate slower. Over here, I'm adding even more controls to add in yet another layer. I wanted to have uh, two gradients to decelerate by. The general idea here is that it was just going to slow down slower as it gets closer to zero. Here we go, time to test it out. See how this deceleration works. And it has a satisfying retention of motion. So when I start accelerating, I start keeping some momentum. Over here, I'm about to add in extra controls so that I can decelerate all the way down to zero. And here it is. So you have a spaceship that can accelerate and it will decelerate a little bit slowly and it feels pretty easy to control. Over here I'm going to be making a custom block because all of the coding for this slowing down is getting kind of bloated and it's making the rest of my code look pretty messy. So I'm going to organize those as a script for deceleration, and then I'm going to put the block in. And it's easier to manage like that. Next I'm going to make another custom screen to try out an idea, because I don't think the spaceship should stop at the edge of the screen. So first I'm getting out the blocks to organize the positions that I'm trying to configure. I'm getting a bunch of logic statements, the X position and the Y position, and something to reset the position based on those conditions. So if the X position is more than 240, it's gone off the right hand side of the screen. So I want to set it to negative 240, which is the left hand side of the screen. Then I add my custom movement over here into the forever loop and test it out. Moment of truth, we pass through and it's quite satisfying. Next time to test if we can go the opposite way and nope, we stop. We can still pass through on this way, but we can't pass through on the left hand side. 
So, time to, to fill in the rest of the equation. So if I'm going past the left hand side, which means x is less than 240, then I want to show up on the opposite side, which would be 240. Now I'm setting up to change the y position, and y has a plus 180 and a minus 180 on Scratch's screen. So I'm going to duplicate a bunch of the if gates that, that I'm going to set it up so that if the y position is more than 180, it will go to negative 180. So in this one loop, we've covered if it goes over the right side, if it goes over the left side, if it goes over the top, and if it goes through the bottom. Time to test it out. And first we can go left, then we can go up, and now we can go down. We can fly through all directions and it's pretty fun. Next I think I'd like to add some sound effects for when I'm shooting lasers. And Scratch has a nice little sound effect over here called Pew. And now that that went so well, maybe my lasers can also travel with me when I go off the screen. So I'm going to borrow the code for a looping screen from my player and give it to my bullets. Let's try this out. So now I'm trying to find a home for this looping screen code and I don't know quite where to put it. Maybe I should put it with my forever loop. Maybe I should put it with a clone loop. Yeah, I'll put it with the clone forever loop. But it doesn't loop. So why? And I try to toss it out because I just realized over here that I have code to delete the bullets when they go off the screen. And that's pretty integral to the coding for it right now. So I'm not going to even mess around with that. But it was a nice little test. And so it's time to officially start making the namesake of the game the first asteroid. I'm going to use a paint bucket, scribble some kind of a rock. Mm, I think I can do better than that. And there we go. Let's go along with this rock and give it some code. So this asteroid is meant to be something that could spawn other asteroids. When I start the program, I'm going to hide it and make a forever loop with this randomization machine. I use some logic to create this randomization by asking the computer to pick a random number between 1 and 10, and if that number happens to be 10, then it's going to execute the code, which is to make another asteroid. The next part after this is to decide what happens when it starts out as a clone which is I want to spawn it in a random location. So I'm going to duplicate and reuse this code from over here, the randomization engine. And if it picks the random number after it starts as a clone, and I'm going to organize this in a custom block, random spawn location, or maybe spawn from screen edges. Let's try that out. So since the first randomization shows whether or not a clone is going to spawn, this one is going to be a much smaller range and is just going to decide the orientation or the spawn location of the asteroid. This first part is going to randomize the left and right orientation from the top, which is Y of 180. After that, wherever they spawn from, they're going to be pointed towards the player. 
Then after you point at the player, you're going to start moving. And now you're going to see me take a peek over at the player code because, ooh, wouldn't it be nice if the asteroid can loop around to the other side of the screen? And you guys are about to witness a gigantic problem over here because if you notice, I haven't tested any of this code in a little bit. So now I am staring at the asteroid when it is showing up there. And now I'm finally going to test out some code, but maybe I'll put in some more stuff before I do that. So far we know that asteroids will spawn, and that they're pointed towards the player, and that they will float, and they do indeed loop around the screen. That's pretty nice. But wow, there are a lot of asteroids on screen. What is going on here? First order of business over here is to slow down the spawn rate. I'm going to add in a wait condition in between the randomization machine so that it's not going to try to spawn asteroids 30 times every second, which is the frame rate. And then at the same time I had the thought that I might like the asteroids look a little more mm, beefy. Uh, nothing's happening. Where did all the asteroids go? Let's try to take a chance to spawn something every half a second instead of every one second. Okay, time to test out my half a second spawn chance. And, oh, uh, maybe we just got lucky. There's one asteroid, two. Uh, it seems to be working a little bit better now. Mm, that's pretty good, actually. Then we can duplicate the conditions for the other sides of the screen. So we can have asteroids spawning from all four edges of the screen. First to make a few copies of the original spawning script. And then I can adjust it so that it's going to focus on each of the sides just like with the looping. This bottom script right here is going to start the wave in a random location from the top to bottom with negative 180 to plus 180 and on the left hand side which is x of negative 240 and then I just need to adjust that to focus on each of the other sides. And to summarize the randomization, there's a 1 in 10 chance every half second that an asteroid will spawn and after that when it spawns, there's a 1 in 4 chance that it's going to go to one of the edges of the screen and spawn. Here we go. Let's test this out. And there is one from the left side, 3, 4, 5. Some are coming from the corner. A lot of them are coming from that left side. Oh, one came from the right, some came from the bottom, some came from the top. It looks like it's pretty good, but wow, we have a giant mess of asteroids now. So now that I have a mess of asteroids, I need a way to get rid of them. I'm going to add some script over here when it starts as a clone, that if it touches a bullet, that the clone will disappear. Time to test out the interaction between the asteroids and the bullets. Here comes the asteroid. I won't disappear, but it wasn't moving. Mm, I don't see any other asteroids coming out. But mysteriously, this one popped back up, and it isn't moving anywhere. And then it disappeared. Over here, I'm scratching my head and trying to figure out what went wrong. Why are they not interacting? Maybe I need to prioritize the way that the clone shows itself. And let's test this out. Oh, no interaction. But the original, uh, for some reason, unhides itself. What I'm going to do right here is I'm going to add in a variable to check if uh, some kind of hit detection is going on. So, even if the thing is not deleting, I want to know if it senses that uh, a bullet is 
being touched. Maybe a variable will catch what the other instruction cannot. And then, because I get distracted easily, I'm back here on the player character and I'm going to mess around with the acceleration again just a little bit. I want the... I noticed on my variables that the acceleration will sometimes go to negative 0.5 and I realize that's because of the way that the script works. So I'm going to set the bottom a little bit above where the deceleration should stop. And now when I check the code again no action from my variable to catch whether collision was occurring. The thinking over here is that maybe my code is too complicated and I need to reorganize it with some modules. I could take my movement and simplify everything so that it's easier to see everything at once. And then, for good measure, we're going to make a new module for collision. Because why not make it redundant so we can make sure to try to catch some kind of collision. I'm getting a little bit desperate over here. So I move my collision stuff under a module and out of what the clone spawning. And I hope that if I include it with the spawning mechanics, that collision will be finally detected. Nope. No detection. And even the original which was disappearing before is now not disappearing anymore. So here I am. I got myself into this mess of not knowing what works and doesn't work because I charged ahead too much and I didn't follow my own process of iterating, meaning moving little by little testing and debugging as I go along. So I accepted what I had to do and we're going to start from scratch again. So time to start back up with something simple and testable and we're going to move forward little by little. So first off when we start the game we're going to hide and make a clone and we started as a clone we're going to show up we're going to point towards the player, and I can start in a random position, doesn't really matter for this test. The point is that uh, I need to do something similar to what I know about, and then I need to add in what I don't know what works. So I know that the movement is fine, and I need number one priority is I want to touch the bullet and disappear. Let's see if this works. But of course, first I need to have a clone to test against, right? So when I start the game, I'm going to test a clone and I'm going to make a few of them. Or a couple. Here we go. Bullet destroys the asteroid. Yay! And pardon my bad aim over here, but I really want to clear out that last asteroid to get some revenge for the previous ones that wouldn't disappear. And I can't aim! There we go, finally. So now that the bullet detection and the collision is working, I can put my randomization for spawning back in. And now that we're back on the good track, we're going to test this out little by little to make sure that each of the little parts works as we add them. Pretty nice! And of course, these asteroids shouldn't just be flying right through my ship. If we make a collision with the player, we need to make sure to stop the game or set up some kind of reset condition. To set up a reset condition, I take the conditions that I want to start out with. Initializing my variables, starting a location, starting direction, and put them with the reset custom block. 
then I add in a reset when I first start the game and then also I add a reset when I'm touching the big asteroid. Okay, let's get hit by an asteroid. Any time now. Any time at all. Where's the asteroid? Here we go. And I reset. And what is going on with my bullets? My bullets are shooting sideways. And there's a simple enough reason for this. When my player reset, my bullet didn't reset. So it stayed pointing in the direction that we died at. The solution for this is that when the player resets, the bullet should also reset so that they can have a chance to be facing in the same direction after a reset. And resetting the bullet is pretty simple. I just want to make sure that after a reset it's pointing in the upward direction just like the player is. And the rest of it is taken care of by the forever loop because I stay with the player and I turn when the player turns. So I got hit by a bullet and I fire in the correct direction. I got hit by another bullet and I'm firing in the correct direction. Now that we don't need to look for a collision with this variable, I can repurpose it to capture the player's score. When we start off the game, we're going to have a score of zero, and every time you kill an asteroid, you get an additional score point. Sounds pretty good. I think the last thing I'm going to do for today is just adding this uh, score initialization to the reset script. A quick recap for today's video. We improved our ship's controls. We added some extra functionality so we can fly across different parts of the screen. We improved our bullets. We also made some asteroids and then unmade them because they didn't work. And then we fixed the problem and we added some functionality to make it more game-like, including score and resetting. Thanks for watching!